What's up, everybody? My name is Lee Shaner, and you're tuned into You Feel Me. So here we are, You Feel Me, the podcast hosted by myself, Lee Shaner. Some of you guys might know me as Intuition. It's the Skull Candy Podcast, where we talk to artists and athletes about music, life, and culture. And I'm here with Maxo, Yo. a gentleman that I just met who walked into the crib, and here we are sitting at my <laughs> kitchen table, right at home. Yeah. What part of town are you coming from? Uh, man, right now, I'm coming from... Right now, I stay in Pomona, so Pomona. but I'm but I'm not coming from Pomona. I'm coming yeah. from Lamert at my girl Auntie Crib. So, yeah, yeah. How long you been there? Uh, I've been there. I went to high school out there, so I've been back and forth there since I was what, like 15. No way. Yeah, I'm originally from Ladera though, so like you're from Park. The, okay. Yeah, like over there by Culver City. Yeah, Culver I know City exactly District. where Ladera is at. Uh-huh. Yeah, for sure. Coincidentally, Pomona is the first city in California that I moved to. Oh, that's crazy. Because I'm not. From, I'm from out of state. Okay. And so when I moved, I went to Cal Poly Pomona. For Word, a year, right. and did you ever hear of a open mic at the college called Session A? Uh, uh-uh, nah. I don't know if it still goes on, but it went on for a long time. And my buddy and I started that, and people just that's like crazy. kept with it. Yeah, that's like crazy. we started that mm, almost twenty years ago. That's wild. Yeah, I, I know Cal Poly got a lot of traditions that keep going on. I, I got a lot of homies over there. I didn't go to uh, yeah, school over there, but how, it's very blessed. Yeah. How, how long you been in Pomona then? Since uh, high school? Since yeah, since yeah. high school. I went to high school out there. Yeah, yeah, very high school. Why did you switch from out by? Ladera to Pomona? Uh, just honestly, just like on some parents' decisions, just like trying to stay, like to stay out of trouble, seeing it was like... They went L- out there too? Yeah, our whole family. LA in that time when I moved was a lot more dangerous for black people too, and yeah. just like gang culture type shit, and you could easily slip into it. Yeah. And we just seen what was going on around us, and then like fortunately like my parents was blessed enough to be able to move us out. Yeah. So like we just got ghosts. And just, a lot of families do that, right? Yeah. They kind of move to maybe the IE or exactly. up to Palmdale or Valley. something like that. Yeah, exactly. the valley and just exactly. trying to kind of get out of the thick of things. Exactly. What was that like for you? Was it a big transition? It was I, It was a transition just because the people were different, but it was blessed though because it also allowed me, it's more of like a suburban area type, mm-hmm. you feel me? Like mm-hmm. over there, the closer you get over there, the houses are more like, it's. you feel me? It's calmer. Yeah, you got Not a yard. city. Yeah. yeah, so it allows you to like grow up on your time and like That's actually that. you feel me like growing yeah. up in the city sometimes it's, it, it be happening too fast it does happen fast so like i appreciated that aspect of it that's really cool you yeah. got brothers and sisters yeah i got two brothers i'm a middle child you're the so, middle yeah what does that mean about you sociologically you're the attention seeker or what? uh nah i actually nah. be i do not like attention bro really? i'll be liking to just be low-key and do my thing but you kind of shy Mm, I'm not shy. I'm just observant. Yeah, yeah right. I'm observant first before I speak. Okay. Yeah, so it's that's a solid trait, you know. Yeah, the people man. that think before they speak, they get <laughs> yeah. things accomplished. It a wasn't. Lot it wasn't always like that though. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, it's being. I don't know. Like my oldest brother rapped. Yeah. My youngest is like little. He get, he grew up like he don't know nothing before an iPhone. So he all electronic. Yeah. You feel me? That's tight. It's hella cool, but it's so different. What kind of rap was your brother into? Uh, he was hip hop, like yeah. my route, my lane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Real. Like he was on um I don't know if you're familiar with the smile with smile. Uh it's my last okay, project yeah. uh before Lil Big Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the He's only on feature that. on that. Yeah, okay, his nice. name's Sharp. On so that. you guys are pretty close in age. Yeah, yeah. And so you would be putting each other up on stuff probably as kids. Hell yeah, yeah. three years apart. So we grew up together. Well, I was a freshman when he was a senior. That's exactly my brother and my, my age difference. Where, yeah, yeah, I was the older one putting him on to shit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I feel like know. that's the route of a big brother that you got. You got to handle that. Like <laughs> you got to make sure your little brother is sharp. Solid, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah going into the him, world. For you can't let him be a square. You know? Yeah, that's it. What did your parents do when you was growing up? Uh, so. At first, my parents have had many jobs, but yeah. at first, my mom, uh, my mom and dad worked at uh, American Airlines, oh, and yeah. then when we were still in the city, and then from there, my mom worked at FedEx. My dad did security. Uh, my dad, he was a PO for a little bit. Uh, what did he do after that? Um, he lost that job. Yeah. Uh, he now he does like uh like little security for uh like on movie sets and stuff. Just oh, really? like yeah. And That's then my sad. mom's a midwife. Oh wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So as of 
like she been a midwife for I would say like four years. And yeah. they, are they both from kind of West LA? Is my that where pop, they grew up? My pops from Chicago. My my uh, mom from Inglewood. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So how did they? How did your dad get out to the West Coast? Do you know? Uh, he because he I, initially he wanted to he moved out here to become a writer. Yeah. He wanted to write scripts and stuff and yeah. had like his own little stuff going. And then he met my mom out here. It's this fault just and then plans I mean, change. You know what I'm saying? When you meet the love yeah. of your life, plans change. It, it when you start different. that family, that's right. It get different. Yeah. They stuck together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, dope, man. Yeah, for the family, you know how. Yeah, go. that's a rare, yeah. that's a rare trait in this day and age. I exactly. feel like so exactly. That's great. Exactly. So growing up, you were, you started off in Ladera, mm-hmm. and this was probably what like early two thousand. Oh five, oh seven. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. So that's mm-hmm. like right around the time that I moved to LA. Oh, you were, yeah, because I'm <laughs> much older than you, so I yeah. was probably you know. So what was it like experiencing West LA through a kid's eyes? Like what were you doing? What, what kind of trouble were you getting into? What was I doing? I was a hooper. I was a basketball. That makes sense. Yeah. Just six five. Yeah, yeah, I was a hooper. So I mean, growing up, like I was always involved in sports. I think that kept me out of a lot of the bullshit. That's cool. Um, but really, what was we doing? Just like going to the store, being mischievous, just yeah. like Take going to taking candy from the store up the street, like yeah. just with my neighbors and stuff. Yeah. It was very neighborhood oriented. Rather than like when I moved, like I was like I'm just it was just me and my brothers because we ain't really know nobody. Yeah, so, you know. So were you up in the hills in Ladera? Uh, I was like right off La Tijera by Pans. If you familiar, yeah, 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 yeah. So right there, I love Pans. We have <laughs> yeah, Pans yeah. mugs in my in my pantry right oh, now. Yeah, yeah we, we're big big fans. Classic spot. I remember. It is. I remember when uh I don't, when that Vin Diesel movie Triple X. Yeah, uh, he they had shot a uh, scene in Pans. I was like, yo, that's you like right this? down the yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. in the old location they shot Pulp Fiction and like they oh, got the yeah. Pulp Fiction signs hanging or like pictures That's in hella the truth. Yeah, That's hella yeah. true. So very very classic uh, yeah, West yeah. LA restaurant. So were you catching buses anywhere as a kid to go to different parts of the city seeing stuff? I was I was with my grandma a yeah. lot. I was with my aunts a lot, like older cousins a lot. We I I started catching buses like more when I was in eighth grade, yeah. high school and stuff, just back and forth. But like through the city, like nah. Were they more in South LA? Yeah, that was who your grandma was, and auntie. Uh, my grandma, where she she was, she stayed up in West Hollywood. She still oh, stayed in West, West Hollywood. Hollywood. No yeah, kidding. Yeah. So yeah. she would we would just be back and forth. My aunts is like in Inglewood. Okay. All by the Forum, all yeah. that like all that area, and then my cousins is like Lemur, all that. Like, like we all spread out, really. Yeah. We, you know, me and my uh, aunt, like close, like me and my family in the household are the yeah. only people that moved. Yeah. So everybody else just like all spread out through the city type. That's right. So you yeah. got family all over the place, so you can kind of hop neighborhood to neighborhood and everywhere. find something to do. Yeah, uh, yeah we've been everywhere. That's type. cool. Man. Yeah. How was school? Did you like school? Were you um, a school dude? I liked the social part. I feel like school limited me though. Why? Just because so? I think differently than how I learned. And yeah. I was like, I like honestly through school, I was in a lot of like the special classes really because they didn't understand. Like it was how like it's taught was uh, just mad. I'm a visual learner and I'm like I gotta learn it like do it and learn it sometimes Uh and like it wasn't correlating with how my brain works right all the way a little more right minded probably was like uh, exactly the creative mind works kind of in the opposite way it's of like the a math textbook. Yeah, you exactly. feel me? So yeah. it's like it, it was hard to like find a space for me in school. So I did all right. I was like a C student. Yeah. But I was eligible for sports as long as I could hoop. Right. So, you know, <laughs> as long as you kept that yeah, two point oh, exactly. you're good and shit. Exactly. Right. And yeah, but it was cool. Were there subjects that you stuck out in in school though? Like, did writing come naturally? Word, though, yeah. yeah, like all the literature. Were you an early reader or anything? Um, no, nah, I don't no. read. I don't even like. Like, I never really the got pen, in the, the pen is strong. That's I what was, I'm asking. You know yeah. what I was really good yeah. at is like I was I was really good at just like the literature and some of the history, but like the essays, yeah. all that, like where I got to like creative writing, you know, and like where they wouldn't like I I, I did well in the areas where they wouldn't like guide the subject mm-hmm. what we needed to write about because then I would just be able to go in my head and just like you feel me paint a picture yeah, yeah. really so I would do really good on those get A's and all that and like all the English that's why I noticed listening to Little Big Man is like you're very good at painting a picture at like one of the lines that stuck out the reason I was asking like oh if it was in South LA like you say like the people that'll hop out at you at the Popeyes across from yeah. your grandma's house and that's shit like that I was story. like oh that's like very LA that's like I can, real... I can picture that block I feel like yeah you know? facts yeah. man and then I also that's a real story one, that one thing yeah. I was about to say, one thing that I want people to know with my music is like my like people that I look up to with rap 
or just in general writers like Nas is a great rapper but it's like he not necessarily talking about himself all the time yeah. like if you listen to a song like Second Childhood he talking about like shit he seen or shit like that's close to him not yeah. necessarily he been through all, like all the time but it's like shit that like like I speak, of, I speak on like black man struggles, you yeah, know, and yeah. like coming up in like the in LA and just like, like having to deal with shit that necessarily like you not even on that, but these motherfuckers is tripping, thinking you on that, and now you in some whole bullshit. Like I've been in them situations, right? But I never really was seeking. I never really like. I don't seek for drama or trouble or nothing because right. I didn't seem like from an early age like. Like where that life gets you, just like having people take like taken away from me from that lifestyle early on, like and seeing like the pain they moms have and like my aunts and shit losing all their sons to the system and like you know what I'm saying. So like, and my mom and I think uh something that deterred me from thinking even thinking to think that way mm-hmm. was like my mom and my dad and like my household was always solid. Having so that I didn't, strong family core, you feel me? Yeah. I didn't necessarily have to go anywhere right like, for that my brother is like you know right because so. because I, I can't relate to that whatsoever mm-hmm. but i know that like I, i've read a lot that it's mm-hmm. like oh when there's a lack of family structure in, mm-hmm. a, in a disenfranchised home or whatever then mm-hmm. like you know people seek that familial relationship on the street or exactly. whatever and so you, you got to bypass that because exactly. you had a strong support system exactly and even like like even aside from that situation yeah. like Everything starts in the home. Right. Like a kid is gonna be disobedient in school because his people, because like his home structure ain't right, and there's right. something going on. Like it That's could be, real. you feel me? Like yeah. it don't even have to be related to that. It, it's just it all starts in like the core. Yeah, so absolutely. it's like that's simple. That's just like it. Like it's always for me. Like this rap stuff is always just deeper than the surface. I just need people to like really pay attention and really like listen and develop their own perspective uh-huh. rather than what I'm saying because like it's important that we think for ourselves rather yeah. than just like he said like you know what I'm saying uh-huh. like I feel like everything's so like like um it's so every everybody just observes the surface you know and it's yeah. hard to really observe the full thing cuz you don't really know the person right you know so I like give the benefit of the doubt are you kind of speaking on the fact that like in this really quick news cycle when so much media is being dropped all the time that it's like people are waiting for somebody to point something out and go like oh this is cool you should listen to exactly. it versus like exactly it, developing their own you, taste right. you know it's yeah. kind of like uh we're in an algorithm world yeah, now yeah like real life yeah. man even with the instant Instagram, like hey. how like you looking up so you like say I want some converse and you scrolling down your gram and it's an ad for converse and like that can <laughs> it's controlling like our yeah. minds is like being controlled on the low it's kind of weird nobody yeah. has their own opinion and if they do it's somebody else's uh-huh. opinion uh-huh. so it's like it's an odd time you it know? is it, it, it is hard to kind of like find yourself in this time I feel yeah exactly. I, and particularly like with meme culture and how mm-hmm. I, I don't know I don't want to imagine like, being 15 right now that's what I'm saying you know? it seems like it would be hard but at the same time I don't want to be like old man yells at cloud you know bro bro but i i'll be feeling old though think yeah. about that because time because technology got time moving so quickly it really does so yeah. it's like what was relevant five years ago is yeah. not relevant no, I it's had true. A flip phone in high school i didn't have an iphone until i graduated yeah so it's like and i graduated in 2013 yeah. <laughs> you feel me oh wow yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. it's like it's crazy how quick shit moving see i didn't even have a cell phone until i graduated college my how brother is that? my brother does not remember his first phone was an iphone Really? Yeah, that may. I mean, yeah, that makes it's sense. Crazy. You're born into having like the world that you're ha- in your hands. You, you know, know what I'm saying? yeah. Like, this because I still think back about like when um, texting in while you were driving was kind of safe because yeah. you would wouldn't have to look at the screen. You would just press three. Like no, how you need an shit. M and you just press a button three times <laughs> yeah. to get M or exactly. whatever. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so I, I remember when it's like yeah. no texting and driving. I'm like, what the fuck? And now I realize like, oh, it's because you have to look at the screen you do. the whole time. Like it's no button. Yeah, <laughs> like for real. <laughs> texting and driving used to be pretty safe. Yeah. Like, Maybe a better driver, maybe. Yeah, you know, like, for real. <laughs> like, for real, though. Yeah. <laughs> for real, that's uh, crazy. So when you guys moved to Pomona, what kind of shock, what kind of, like, culture shock is that for you? Just things slow down a little bit? Uh, things slow down. It was a lot more white people. That's what, I was, yeah, yeah. what was the demographic was, like? Ladera is a very, like, predominantly black area, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, like, like where we, where we moved, like, it was just, it's like, it's... It's black people everywhere, right. but like it's a lot. It's just a lot more like the schools, how this, how everything was set up was so different. Like, yeah. and it was so like, like I don't know. I feel like over there, like 
I just I see like Matt different things I wasn't supposed to see earlier just because like these I was, you feel me like I low key like was like I had like the homies but like yeah you know, it, like it was mad white folks that like I'm, they pulling up in Porsches and shit and like oh, yeah. they got money because they parents was it's like it was it was different, it's different. it was different but yeah. then like like what benefited me is like I was I was kind of. I wasn't new to that because, like, growing up, my uncle played in the NFL for 15 years. Oh, so wow. I didn't been back and forth to Virginia every summer and then got a big old mansion, whips, all that. That's like, where he stayed. It was he, in Virginia? Yeah, because he, he, he played for the Redskins. He oh, played yeah. for the Bills. He oh, played wow. for the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah, he played. Started 15 years. Seen a Super Bowl. Re- oh, all really? That. Yeah. That's so, tight. like, yeah, it was very, like, that opened my eyes up. I seen money young. Yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah. it's like, that didn't really fuck me up. But uh-huh. I seen how it, like, fucked the homies up, too. Right. Like, some of my friends, like... Like you, like, you know how when you walk into a crib and you ain't seen something and you, like, looking around like you ain't seen something? Yeah. I, I just found myself, like, like a lot. Uh, that's when I noticed I just was able to, I've been blessed enough to see things go a lot of different ways. Right. You feel me? Like, right. it hasn't even necessarily been based on, like, where I'm at. More like, because I've been in so many places. Well, what, yeah, when you get to see, when you get to experience things that people in the same situation as you might not be experiencing, you get mm-hmm. to like broaden your horizons a little bit. Exactly. You don't have such a myopic view of the world. Exactly. Like, you're like, oh, it can be this or it can be that. Exactly. Yeah. And then moving, I'm coming, like, before we move, like, I'm coming from a perspective, like, I got cousins dead and in jail, just yeah. awesome shit that these niggas don't even know about. Right. You know, so it was like, I seen that side, but like, that, like, I seen the new side of things. It, it was very, like, weird, but it wasn't, like, out of my element, per se. Was it easy for you to make friends in the new spot? I mean... You seem like a pretty sociable dude just in the first five minutes I've met you. <laughs> yeah, people, I noticed throughout yeah. my life, people are very, like, uh, I don't know, drawn, drawn to, to you? me. Yeah, just I get in that. A, like, I can see that. In a very humble way, just, like, I don't know. It's, like, on some leadership, low-key. I was, I, you're going to think that I'm just bullshitting, but I was just about to say like, you strike me as a natural leader. And part of that is just human instinct because like there are scientific studies that people that are over a certain height and they have good Mm. posture, like people look at them like, oh, that's a leader. There was once a guy that got, uh, almost got elected, uh, as president just like because he was tall, (laughs) like literally, you know what I'm saying? Cause people were like, oh, he looks like he should be the president. That's crazy. Yeah. And so like, I was going to say when you walk in, I'm like, people probably look at you like a leader. Yeah. yeah, So you, you felt that. So I felt it a little bit yeah. but it took it took a little time to realize what it was yeah. you know right right because yeah. you seem like you kind of you have like a my gut instinct is like kind of a chameleon quality where probably you get along with different types of you groups of people me? i could kick it with a lot of people a lot of different types of people and yeah. like be still play background and, and chill out you that know? makes sense that makes yeah. sense so did you go there and just start instantly balling on people and hooping though uh yeah i went yeah. there started hooping for yeah. sure uh i actually didn't make the squad my freshman year really? then i made it i made made a senior uh, no I made a, a sophomore year junior varsity yeah. just all throughout the three yeah. years and then just I tried to hoop in college but I hurt my back and shit oh really but yeah it was um I started I don't know I like it was just a much slower pace mm-hmm. like it it I like people like growing up yeah just in a place that's like not a city place uh-huh. is very like I don't know the pace is so weird that it's just you got more time to think you know what I'm saying yeah. which is ne- which is not necessarily a bad thing cause like I feel like now that it's like I'm 24 and like shit is wrapped around like I found myself like a little more solid than like thinker than like a, like a like more of my friends, I probably got a lot to do in my home. But you had a lot of time to be in your own head, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's not as much of like a. Yeah, there's a certain, in L.A., like, survival mode you have to kick in a lot exactly, of the times or something, exactly, you know? Exactly, yeah. and I was I was able to, like, bypass some of that, like, to in the crucial years. Like, I felt a little bit of it, yeah. and then, like, coming back, like, now I feel it a little bit, but I'm older, but still people be tripping. Yeah. But, like, I was able to just, like, bypass a little bit of that. Totally. Yeah, so it was kind of beneficial. It was very beneficial. Were you already rapping as a youngster? Like, were you in high school? Did you start barring up? Man, I started rapping in 2016. 
Just started. Yeah, 2016. I made my first tape called After Hours. You son of a bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How does it happen so fast? Man, bro. Yeah. Cause my, I, but mind you, like my brother really raps. Yeah. You know, and like really like. Was he rapping while you were in high school still? Nah, he was rapping like out. Like like I was fresh out of yeah. high school. Uh-huh. Like. 2014. Uh-huh. So he was rapping. I would pull up to like the little pay to play shows with him and shit. And like, it Where would at? Be like cool. the Glass House and shit? Like, um, what's that place called on Hollywood Boulevard? The Roxy? Uh, nah, it was this little place. Uh, I forgot. Oh, it's like an all ages venue, I think. Is, there a Is it a bar? Um, I don't know. I don't I forgot the name, but yeah. it was like, I would pull up to little spots with him and I would like see like shit he was doing. So it kind of hit me. To just like what to do, uh-huh. a lot of things, bro, in life. I know, like, I'll be all over the place Go sometimes, ahead. but a lot of things, like, I'll be looking back and like they prepare me for like what I don't even know is coming. Right. So it's like it's weird. You kind of Mr. Miyagi yourself. Through, it's weird. Through life, you know, it's, it's like you, you're doing one thing and not realizing that it teaches you how the what it where it was supposed to guide you. In, you in feel actuality. me? Yeah. But it almost look, it almost forced you to see like what's written for you yeah. too. Also, like just on some like manifestation. Path. But you don't notice shit. it until years later because you just I, in the moment yeah you know well so tell me about those like you're going to these you're going to these pay to play shows mm-hmm. what, what did you learn from them uh like i would just learn like how to like like just on stage just like what not to do just yeah. like same you got an older brother do you no do you, i'm I, the older brother you're the oldest okay so oh, but i watched a lot of people to learn what not to do you on feel stage me. though you trust. feel me you're yeah. just in life like yeah. so it was just i took that same aspect from just watching him through life just like seeing that just on stage okay like how you like what you, i'm like what he could do that was different but he he you know he gonna learn on his own yeah. he hard-headed we all want to like be grown right so it's like he did it his way, but then me going into like what I'm doing, I was able to like pinpoint what I wanted to tell, do. Tell any young bucks listening some good pointers of what not to do on stage because I have my <laughs> Yo, I have my list of things that this, you shouldn't do on stage. Don't 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 focus too much on what the crowd thinks for real because you really yes. just essentially like up there by yourself. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And it's like like just. Overall, just like if you're doing music, just make songs you like. That's it. For real. Because then when you perform them, you're going to be able to tap in so yeah. like quicker and you're going to be able to do your thing. You got to notice that the more you maybe yell at an audience or get mad at them for not reacting to the song, the, the quicker it is and the easier it is for them to hate you. You feel you me? Know what I mean? And just like be yourself. Yeah. Like you, it, 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 it shouldn't be no facade aspect to it. Because right. it's like... If you just putting yourself out there, what are people really going to say that's going to be negative or going to hurt you if you already put yourself out there? That's so, a very strong, like, self-aware perspective, though. A lot of people word. don't find that in themselves until word. they're much older, you know? So, like, I think you're, like, kind of blessed in that, man. Word. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, the easiest way to lose an audience is definitely to be like, oh, what? You guys aren't feeling this shit? You feel yeah. me? Like, and then it's like, they can get off the stage, yeah, bro. What like, the fuck? Yeah, for real. So, it's just <laughs> like that. It just taught me and it just taught me, like. Like, I'm a very visual person, so, yeah. like, once I seen how the music worked and just, like, once I learned that, like, I was already, be a, like, I already had, like, a picture in my head for the visual side. Just, like, today, like, the videos you've seen, mm-hmm. the artwork, mm-hmm. like, I'm very involved in, like, everything that's put together. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole vision. So, it's just, like, wasn't that, it, what, it, I knew what I wanted, so it, once I just sharpened my skill it, mm-hmm. and they everything came together, it was kind of like, okay, I got something. Yeah, because you, you know? were able to kind of like create this well-rounded package for yourself. Exactly. Like, since you're so visual. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What did your brother get in the house to start making the music? And like, did it intrigue you immediately? Was it like, boom, I got Fruity Loops on the laptop? He, what did he get? He was going over his homie's yeah. crib, uh, just making music yeah. and just recording over there. I He didn't even have nothing. He had a Would mic yeah. and he had just like the regular stuff, but he didn't have like the nothing crazy. Logic, you feel me? Yeah. All that. Like, would you go over to the house and watch him record? Mm-hmm. I went over there a couple times. Yeah, I went over there a couple times, but mainly like, like I would see the songs before they was recorded. Like he would be like, "Yo, you, yo, let and me spit this, this in the car exactly. for you." Real and quick. then it's like the hardest shit. And yeah. like, just those moments is way more inspiring than like, yeah. cause you seeing the shit before. Like it's in, you feel me? It's yeah. in his head. So it's like. That shit was crazy to me. Let me ask you some inside baseball nerd rap shit. When you would listen to your brother spit in the car, not to make him a scapegoat for this story, but when you would listen to him spit in the car. Or just anywhere. Anywhere. And you would feel that energy of like hearing it raw over the beat. 
was he able to transfer that energy onto a mic and get that and get it sounding and having that same feeling when it was recorded? Or is that something that you learned like, oh, I need to be able to have the same energy live and on the mic? Sometimes. Yeah. I think I think we both have very we both like good at that, just making it sound like yeah. um like we want it to sound. But I think like he he not a hustler. He more right. just like a, you. you feel me? Yeah. Like it takes that's where the hustle aspect yeah. come in, where it's like you gotta you could be on your fiftieth take, but you're gonna get the song done. Yeah. You feel me? It's right. like a lot of people don't have that. Yeah. And I mean the reason I ask that is because I've met a lot of rappers through my travels where it was like no. I would hear him spit something in real life and be like Oh my God, exactly. like you are the truth. And it don't translate. But they can't get it on mic. Yeah. And so that's something you can learn. It's mm-hmm. like where, where, oh, I need to make this translate and have that same exactly. feeling when I'm finished or else nobody's going to fuck with the records because not everybody's ever going to get to see live. Exactly. You know? yeah. Exactly. So it, yeah, yeah. He, it, it, it translated though yeah, on good. something, yeah, and something on some songs, on some songs it didn't, but right. I, it, I don't, that, it was just a weird time, bro. Cause it's like, it's like, when he st- like when he stopped rapping and I started rapping mm-hmm. and I was able to just like polish it my way and just yeah. like but I I never really like I don't know like I always had my own vision maybe I had my own vision the whole time and was trying to like put that into his and then like when it, what he wasn't being receptive it just forced me to like do my thing yeah you know it's interesting because I mean there's a lot of rappers with that story did you uh, uh, did you check out Gucci Mane's autobiography <laughs> no I didn't it's fantastic I <laughs> yeah, want to say that first first. but like his his shit was kind of the same way where it was like he was hustling and then he like started buying studio time for rappers mm. and then they wouldn't show up and he'd be like, man, fuck it. Fuck Let me yeah, just do I'll, this. I have a vision for what they should sound like. Let me do it. For real. And then that That's what it come down to because yeah. it's like, I, like, when are you going to be the source? Right. You know? Right. Because you can have all the ideas in the world, but if you're not putting your money where your mouth is, exactly. like, what's the point? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Like we all, we all human. Like we can all literally do what yeah. we want to. Did you start rapping around the time that you hurt your back or what? I started rapping around the time my brother stopped rapping. Yeah. He started just he tripping, going through some shit just with his head and shit yeah. and just like just started like feeling the evils of life oh, that yeah. it that it shows you just yeah. as a black man too. Right. He started just feeling that. And then I started rapping just like on some just there for therapeutic reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and then it just Yo, it, it just turned into this. <laughs> you feel me? Like it just like I didn't, I didn't like um, ever like plan to like it was an get here, low key. So yeah. it's just like it's just honestly like low key like amazing. But it also, to be here in Eagle Rock, you, you mean that's a, that's right a, here you in Eagle Rock? To at you right house, here at my yo. kitchen table. That's what. It, <laughs> no, yeah. for real. No, <laughs> no, but yeah, it's just like it's 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 odd, man. It's odd. It's odd. It's kind of nice when that happens though. Like when you fall into something that you're really good at and you didn't realize that Word. you're good at it. Like that's pretty tight. Word. You know what I mean? Word. Because you can you can dream about things, mm. and, and sometimes like when the original dream fails, like maybe basketball career or mm. whatever. It's like you accidentally stumble into the thing you're supposed to be doing. That's a fact. You know? And that's low key what happened. I've yeah. been reading a lot about that lately where it's like, don't look at a failure as like an actual failure. Look at that as like a stepping stone to what you're supposed what to actually you're supposed be doing. To do. It yeah. almost opens like it makes you think a certain way. That's right. Like a, le- a loss is a lesson. Yeah, that's know? right. Yeah. Did you feel a magic within yourself the first time that you like actually put headphones on and recorded over a beat? Um, Were you like, oh, this is it? Or did it take time uh, to grow? It took time to grow. Uh, First, I started recording over just like beats out fine. It took a little time to grow, though. And then I made one song I really liked. Just in my first song on my SoundCloud called Always. One song I really fucked with. And then that just transpired to me like... Like ditching class at Chafee College to go record with the homie Vic, mm-hmm. and then that turned into a whole six track EP tape thing. Then you know it just kept like snowballing, snowballing mm-hmm. into something bigger every time. And then like I remember when I recorded like um, when I recorded my first tape after hours, like like my mom, I didn't tell my peoples, like nobody knew. My mom had to find it. Yeah, you know, she's yeah. seen it on like the internet or on like Instagram or something. Yeah. And like like cause I just always it was all this all this has always just been for me. Like the listeners and everything is a blessing right now. Yeah. But it's always just been for me, just like 
for me to learn myself through it. You feel yeah. me? Because it's like I just it, it's it's like it's helping the listener grow and mm-hmm. like think how they want to think, but. It's, it's me well, it's me when, I, these when I listen to the newest tape little big man which you guys should go stream right now I feel the catharsis in it like right. I feel you getting over shit right. and I feel you working through shit right. and figuring it out as you go does yeah. that make sense yeah. like that record feels like that word that's yeah. that's tight thing because yeah. that's what it needs to be for yeah real. for sure and it has this kind of I, I don't I, I hate to say the word like old school feel, but it has a timeless feel. How about that? Like right. it has a feeling where you can't tell what era it's from it, right. because it's like modern, but also clearly rooted in, in right. the histories of boom bap rap. You know what I mean? Word, word. It, Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah, I perfectly understand what you're saying. Yeah. Because the influences came from like at like what I grew up on, like just what was around me and then yeah. also what my parents was playing. Yeah. A lot of like Dwelle Erica. Yeah, like, you know, like that yeah, I can feel that common. Mm-hmm. So it's like that's influence because that's what I, I was playing a lot of Doyle when I was making Little Big Man, mm-hmm. but I was also playing like a lot of Greedo. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like it's just both of both, mm-hmm. like both worlds type shit. Yeah, that makes sense. It, yeah, what were your parents playing in the house when you were a kid? But other than Common and Dwelling oh, America, like, like a lot of that, like Jill, like Marvin, yeah. uh, Zap Mama, uh, um, Anita. Um, like all the classics, like it sounds warm. Yeah. It sounds like you're listening to a lot of warm music. Yeah. If that makes sense, yeah. right? Like yeah. that real, like give you a big hug of soul. Type exactly, of shit, right? all the black music yeah. for real. Just all like the shit that like niggas talk about. You yeah. feel me? Like yeah. all that D- D'Angelo, all that. Like, it's all the shit that I would put on to clean my house. Really, you feel yeah. me? Like all that, like yeah. for real, all that. Yeah, like, yeah, that's that mood. Yeah. Were you also at that age that your parents are playing that, and you're hearing all these warm, all this warm music in the house? Are you listening to what's coming out on the radio as well, or like exactly. you know what I mean? Then, yeah, like Bubba Sparks and shit. Oh, you feel me? Hey. Like like Ging Yang Twins on yeah. the radio. That was like, huge. All that time. Yeah. yeah, all that. Chameleon there. Mike Jones. We had the Mike Jones tape. My brother got the one at CD the Bow Wow shit when it first dropped yeah. for his birthday. Like we was on that too. I think people would like sleep on Mike Jones, uh, that whole movement, Paul Wall and Mike mm-hmm. Jones and and um, Slim Thug. Like you go back and listen to those tapes, they age pretty well. Particularly yeah. the Chopped and Screw versions. I really like those tapes, uh, Chopped and Screw. For real, They're for like, real. Cause even like it, it don't go nowhere. Cause like even you see like Salines reminiscing on it in her yeah. tape. I don't know if you heard it, but like I did. Yeah, shit like that. Like it's like people know what's classic. Yeah, people yeah. know what's classic. Yeah, Swisher House. Shout out exactly, House. Paul Wall. Bubba Sparks had like one really really good album bro yes. and people like forget about that i yes. feel like, like that i don't know for some reason that era of like 2004 to 2007 has gotten like forgotten or it something didn't stick. It yeah didn't it didn't stick because it's it, it wasn't it was a weird time where like people was in denial of what was happening yeah everything was very shiny and glossy at that time and audio wise does exactly. that make sense like it sounded really polished and then it got a little grimier very quickly yeah, exactly. after that right? exactly yeah so i could see that influence because that's another thing when I listen to your tape is that it didn't sound as it doesn't sound as regional as I would expect either. I couldn't really tell where you were from. I was where? getting little hints of L.A., but I was also like, this, maybe he's from the South. I can't that's tell. Tight. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's hard. Does that make sense? That's very tight. Yeah, because like it don't. I don't want my music to focus on necessarily a place more than I needed to resonate with just people. Yeah, because it's like it's human. Like it don't. I feel like everything is like associated to where you from rather than the person. Like mm-hmm. there's so many niggas hiding behind, like not hiding, but just like the only thing they represent is just a city where it's like, what are you about? Mm-hmm. I didn't heard so many things about your city, your block. I, I don't need to know about that no more. Mm-hmm. What are you about? Yeah, like, how, you know? has, how has that affected yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Right. Or just like, what are you about? Yeah. Like, what can like, what do you have to say? Like, uh-huh. that's like about you. Like, yeah. people makes like I've heard listened to so many albums and so many i'm tired of rap because it's it's so much based on like what's around or what's like rather than like how do you feel Uh like it's just like damn what are we talking about like you know it's like having a conversation with no substance yeah no i completely feel you yeah if you stop listening to rap what do you listen to when you're in album mode uh i listen right now like i listen to a lot of jazz stuff or like a lot of like i've been on my reggae tip to uh what I listen to, like a lot, like Jill. Like I'll be on my yeah. Jill Scott tip heavy. Yeah. Uh, 
you could feel the jazz influence in the music too though like that sounds like you have an ear for like jazzy beats it's funny i'm actually reading a book about um tribe called quest right now uh-huh. fantastic book yeah, shout yeah. out um hanif yeah hanif abdul rakib but yeah he's talking about just the jazz influence in that era mm-hmm. and how like they were kind of one of the first groups to really like insert that jazz feel right exactly. like, you know before the soul feel even got popular exactly. and shit. but you gotta even think of like the root of hip-hop is like really the Isley brothers yeah you feel me like uh-huh. biggie like think about it yeah. you feel me like so it's like it, it, like all that like it's just it's all like it's all just like growth into like evolution of music but like it's all related connected like you feel me do you make your own beats i, I didn't do enough research on the track I, listing no nah, okay. i don't make my own beats but low key because yeah. i'll be in there when they making them yeah. or like, so you're giving suggestions yeah, it's like oh wait i yeah. like that part that yeah, talks to exactly me. i never made beats I don't push either no buttons though right exactly i like i never made beats either but i i would definitely like I, when i would work with a producer i'd be like oh that that part of the sample that, exactly. or like or maybe i would find a sample for him exactly. are you finding samples exactly yeah. something you could loop up for sure yeah for sure. i'm yeah. starting to i'm trying to come with the drums i'm trying to get the drum pad right so i can come that's the hardest drum. part once you can get the swing on the drums, everything over comes. With. Yeah, it's yeah. over with. Once I get these drums right and just be able to like shoot them to a producer, have them build around them, like yeah. that's what I want to do. What is your studio process like? Are you somebody that comes with notebooks full already and you just go in there and bang it out, or are you writing while you're in the studio? Or a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, for little big man, it was a lot of like. I might go over like like because a lot of the producers I work with I really know so I yeah. can just pull up on them we go through some beats uh, and then I pick some I'll sit with some for like a week write something uh, and then come to the studio with like they're dudes from the LA area too yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay mm-hmm. yeah uh, yeah uh, the only one that's not is Roper Williams okay. they, that's a duo from New Jersey but Swarvy. Uh, he stay in Echo Park. And oh, yeah. Last name David stay in Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, yeah. Uh, Vic stay in Rialto. So okay. it's like, yeah, for sure. You got that spread. That was a long drive, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for I, sure. I hear those neighborhoods and I'm like, wow, you were driving a lot making for this sure, record. Yeah. For sure, yeah. It's that's like the, anything to get it done. Though. Yeah, that's but, spread but out. Like, I'll just, uh, like, I came with a lot of ideas, but sometimes I would just write in the studio for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. It definitely has a cohesion to it to where you can't tell that it's different producers. So, right. like, that's a that's a great teller i think for somebody who's going to have a, a nice long career is that if you can make multiple people come together and make it sound as though it was a team effort Word. you know what i mean Word. and there's not a bunch of like people mm-hmm. trying to be the all-star exactly does that make yeah, sense yeah, I feel you. yeah that um that's a really solid trade i think you got a good year for beats man Word. that's not really thank a question you. just a compliment thank you yeah so after you release your first project and your mom is like finding out about it on instagram and mm-hmm. stuff like do you start trying to get out in the city playing shows? Are you doing like, are you going back to La Mert and doing bananas and stuff like that? I was, I feel like, like I've been, I was naive to my fan base. Yeah. Till I, a couple months ago, I threw a listening party for a little bit. I man. saw that. It looked it like had it was, her own coffee oh. and that shit went up. Yeah. So I've been, I feel like I've been naive because I just always, I never looked for, I was so like, I've been so on just blocking out opinions because I'm like, uh, like I don't even want to hear what y'all think about my right. shit. So it's like it, it created like a shield of like I never, I, I never really like I would do shows with the homies and shit and pop up at they sets, mm-hmm. but I never, I still ain't have my own show in LA at all ever. Yet. Yeah. So it's like I never had a Max O show ever. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So it's like we just. If you had a dream first spot to do your first LA show, where would it be? Uh, where would do you have it a favorite be? venue or something? Um, I don't have a favorite venue. I just want it to be somewhere where everybody can come. Yeah, yeah, kind of central. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't. I want to, I want to bring back some things like some jazz clubs and Lamert and shit, or just like you yeah. know, like like yeah. all the shit that like people is forgetting about, like like because it's just I don't know. It's so rooted. Like I don't know. I feel like anywhere where it just has some type of like. People been through there that like really changed something. You yeah. feel me? Like yeah. I just want to go like to those spots. Mm-hmm. Like, but I I understand you got to work your way up to it. But I'll be feeling like I'm ready to just like reemerge, help some shit reemerge that matters, and that's gonna like really like. Do you know Verbs? Nah. Oh man, I gotta link you with my homie Verbs. He does all kind of stuff in Lamert. And Earth. yeah, he could he could Earth. probably facilitate that. Yeah, Him, exactly. uh, I think with um one of his mentors named Ben, and I can't think of Ben's last name, but he runs the spot that they used to do Project Blow at right. and okay. all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll link you guys. Yeah, be dope. please do. Yeah. Please do. How is it that you go from 
releasing a record in 2016 to like people at Def Jam finding you? What's the process like? Um, the internet. Yeah. You know, and people be sleep on that. Like, did something pop up to where you put a song out and ended up on a Spotify playlist well, or something? The people was drawn to smile. So that, that EP smile, yeah. everybody should go check that out okay. right now. Smile on all. Just type in my name, Maxo Smile, yeah. on everything. Okay. I released Smile before Jay Z put 444 out. Okay. So it's like, you feel me? Yeah. Like, people should go check that out. I feel like that like made a lot of noise. And then, like, also my peers. Yeah. You know, it's like my peers is like very, uh, like, we on our own little wave to where it's like we all connecting and all coming up at the same time. Uh-huh. Like, like it's crazy. Like so, that was an extra support system. You feel me? Well. Yeah. yeah. But people, yo, I think Smile drew people to my shit. And then yeah. shout out Mike Chavez. Uh, he was an A and R at Def Jam, and he just hit you up. And like, he, yeah, and he was down to like. He said, get "What out. are your plans?" He was. You feel yeah. me? So it's like, yeah, it's like that. And then like he got me to what I like, what I needed to do, what I wanted to do. So yeah. I'm like, fuck it, let's run it. Well, what's that process like as a young dude? What are you at that time? Like 22, 23? Uh, well, yeah, 22. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so 22, 22, about to be 23. Okay, so Mike hits you up from Def Jam, and like, mm-hmm. wh- what does that feel like when you open? that email or are you like oh fuck um it was a lot because prior to that i had a e- little three track ep on my soundcloud yeah. called uh called gold in the mud mm-hmm. uh that shit came out after after hours so mm-hmm. like i would say like like mm-hmm, like i might have been in 2016 too like late 2016 mm-hmm. so like, i don't i forget the date right yeah. now but on that i had a song called only niggas and coach and i was like i'll probably never get a deal but if i do i hope it's def jam uh, <laughs> and then like they didn't hear that yeah you feel me they yeah. heard smile right so it's like i don't know like i was tripping just off self-fulfilling prophecy yo i was i was like bugging like i had luckily i had people around me once again this came into play to benefit for me like I have people around me that like a good support system and niggas that's been like seeing the game and like like niggas that could facilitate lawyers they trust and like you feel me oh that's all the stuff that I like would love to hear about because I don't know how any of that operates and Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't ever get to hear how that operates so yeah that was kind of what I was getting towards is like you're this young dude fresh out of high school just about like a couple years out of college whatever and 22, you might feel like a man at that time, but you'll probably look back and go, wow, I was young as shit. So, like, how do you navigate that? Like, who do you hit up first and go, wow, Def Jam is talking about maybe wanting to sign me. Like, what do I do? Is it, like, mom and dad? Or is it, it like, you had a manager or something? Like, what happens? So, at that time, I... I hit up my homie Nick Herbert. He managed yeah. in- Injury Reserve. Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was like, bro, what is this? Is yeah. this for real? Yeah. He was like, yeah, this is for real. Uh-huh. So then I'm like, okay. So then I'm te- like, I'm like, I tell my mom and shit, and then like we like, damn, okay, da da da. Like we need to yeah. figure out like what we need to do. And not- I mean, your parents must be tripping too, because like they're the right age to have grown up on Def Jam as you, well. You like- feel me? Every they was geeked, but yeah. at the same time, like. Just like with my uncle and shit, like we seen this shit happen, yeah. so we weren't too like swept off. We was like, okay, what we need, you yeah. feel me? So it was like after that, I went to my like I don't know if you're familiar with Tarak, um, yeah, which, from Detroit. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was just in Dilla era, all yeah, that. Yeah. He managed me, and he helps like he like help facilitate and like just everything like came together. Like my family, like my mom's help manage me, and then yeah. his wife is yeah. like, and they're involved in like just you feel me. So you have people in the background that already was like low key. I've been through this, and I know what we need to do to not get like mm-hmm. swept away in this. Exactly, shit. Yeah. but how I knew him was just on some shit. Like my mom, a midwife, like I said, yeah. she delivered their babies to rocks. Yeah, wow. And then they lived down the street from us. That's some perfect small world. So shit. I'm like, so then that, so then t- like on some shit, like they, it just came together. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. And like they had a lawyer because on retainer because they been. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, he's been in the industry for like probably 20 years. Exactly. Yeah. So just 
like that just kind of came together and then everything is just so yeah. connected yeah like, is that one of those things where like when a label's reaching out to you the smartest move is go get a lawyer first the smartest move yeah. is get somebody that know what they speaking on that contract understands that contract. language because that's a different language if you're a regular nigga you're not gonna understand that shit oh i mean yeah, yeah. i i consider myself a pretty good reader and i read contracts and i go this seems like another language you're not what gonna understand this? it you yeah. need somebody that's gonna be able to like read that language and that is like shout out shay like yeah. you feel me like yeah, yeah. all like you, any regular nigga not gonna be able to read that shit so one, once <laughs> the ink dries on that paper what happens do they start flying you places meeting producers or or is it just kind of like hey we already like what you're doing so just keep doing it exactly that yeah, yeah. so mike chavez he's yeah. like i i told him that like I, I told him like let me keep doing like they didn't come in they didn't come in wanting to uh, change anything. Yeah, like kick down me? the doors and be like, okay, yeah. you got to put a shirt on, put a suit on exactly, and shit. Like, yeah. Exactly. They was, and mind you, it's going to be like, like, I feel like I, it's going to be little hints, you feel me, these niggas is throwing just yeah. to like, oh, you should like, but if you solid within your vision, you're not going to fall to that. You right, feel me? So right. it's like, I just always knew what I wanted and like everything like on this project, like Def Jam didn't. All they do, all they did was cut the check. I need yeah. niggas to understand that. Yeah. All these niggas that was on this tape, Swarvy, Roper, yeah. Last Name David, Vic, they never all met. the features is my people. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I sat there and I sequenced the album with. Well, Swarvey. that's what like before we even turned on the mic and you're sitting here. I said I had no idea you were on Def Jam because I listened to the record and I go, this sounds like a bunch of friends that made some music together. It doesn't. It, it doesn't is. sound like anybody going like, okay, hey, can you be a little more this or be a little more that? It's like yeah. very authentic, very. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so, um. Do they panic about samples? Because you sound fucking Yo, good over some sample yeah. beats. It, uh, they, you feel me? We got, it's a cool little budget. Yeah, so like so we was able to do what we needed to do. Yeah. yeah for sure, for yeah. sure. So that's nice. They're kind of letting you actually develop your talent and incubate for a little bit and not like. It's it's more so like I'm not letting it not be that. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Like I'm, ain't nobody controlling where I go. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Little Big Man comes out in what? February? March 15th. March? It started dropping singles in February. So it's pretty new. Hella. Yeah. Two months. How, how, how has it felt? What was the, how has the reaction been? People been like, people been eating it up. I yeah. feel like people, I've definitely like, I definitely feel like different. Not yeah. me. Yeah. But just like how people feel about me. So here, here's what like, I will say about this. And it might come off sounding like a backhanded compliment or something, but I'm saying that this is like, this to me says that you, you got a bright future, right? Is that I haven't heard any like normies talking about it yet, but mm -hmm. I've heard like everybody that I think knows music mm -hmm. talking about it, right? It's so it's like the murmurs on Twitter right now are from the people that are like the deep cut seekers mm -hmm. and they're all going like, yo, Max, oh, Max, oh, Max, that's really mm -hmm. dope. You know what I mean? And then I think I think what happens with that is then the next step is like normal people start like Exactly. You, it's like and then it's kaboom. And my whole thing is just like as long as the people talking. Yeah. You know, oh, so, and people are talking. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's just like right now it's still just those like the people it's that are been inside out for basically. Two you, months. Yeah. you feel me? Yeah. It's like it's like I, I like it feels like it's been out for like a year yeah. in my head. Yeah. But it's like I gotta realize what's what's going on yeah. you feel me and like music take time to hit people it does take time and particularly when you have an album that is an album you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying like there are great songs on there that stick out but nothing sticks out so much to where you're like this is the one i should show people exactly. it's like yo sit down take a half hour listen to the whole fucking thing exactly. like put your headphones on and like just vibe and then mind you it's so countercultural yeah, too on yeah. a major too so right. it's like people gotta like see what's going on that's the thing is it <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you've gotten this before and I'm sorry to be stereotypical or cliche, but it reminds me of like in 2006, 2007 when I'm hearing Blue for Word. the first time and Blue's getting picked up because that's that same kind of like timeless, you can't tell when it came out, mm. regionless, you can't tell where it's from. Mm. It's just bars and good beats mm -hmm. and like a good feeling. And know? that's crazy that yeah. people, like I've heard that before yeah. and that's crazy that people are saying that because like that's somebody I grew up on thinking he was the best. He's, yeah. And 
and it's just like phenomenal. What, it's rapper. just like crazy that like, it, and that's not to say that I think you guys sound anything alike. It's just that, but like, it's just even being mentioned next to his name is crazy, right? Because it's like, what the fuck? Like the way that I have to compartmentalize rap music is like, oh, this reminds me of that. Yeah, and just feeling, you know, and I'm yeah. like, this is what it felt like when I heard Blue the first time. That's crazy. Yeah. Now that the record's out, are you gonna be on the road and stuff? Yeah, we lighted some shows up. Yeah, yeah we lighted some shows up for sure. Just trying to get everything situated. Yeah, for, right. for sure, for sure. Are you gonna go out with somebody or trying to headline or what's uh, happening? I'm trying to do both. Yeah. Whichever comes first, we try that's what we're trying to figure out right yeah, now. So like you. whatever uh comes first for real. But I'm trying to do both. Everything. Everything. Yeah, you know? that's what it takes. I would more so like to run my own shows up when it's like I'm like bigger. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Or not bigger, but like uh like run my own shows up off of something where yeah. I'm hot. You feel I, I me? Feel you, yeah. yeah. I always thought about that. Like it had a lot of friends that used to go out to South by Southwest every year, mm. right? And like they would just go there and be doing just grinding and doing yeah. like the the backyard shows at yeah. like two PM that nobody's there. Yeah. Or, like everybody's still drunk from the night before or whatever. And I was always kinda like it seems more beneficial to wait to do something like that until it's like your it's your year you, that year. You feel me? You know what I mean? It's like people. I don't know. I feel like some people think like I'll be spoiled with this rap shit, but I'm more so view it. It's work for it's, sure. You but just I, seem patient with it. Yeah, I'm and with my I learned to be patient. I learned to love this shit enough to be patient with it. Yeah, because it's like you could easily be impatient with it for mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. Like it's yeah, yeah. I I had to. I feel I had you. to. You're, a lot of people just a lot, like I just prefer to work smarter with this because it's so easy to burn yourself out with this shit and you could be like, oh, when you're 30, I'm trying to be young. You mm-hmm, feel me? Mm-hmm. Like Jay-Z's 50 still rapping mm-hmm. and niggas is not like, you burnt out. Nah. No, I'm trying to be like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you got to work smart and strategic rather right. than just like beat the same bag every day till Conserve it busts. Your energy. You feel me? Yeah. Like. Heading to New York tomorrow? The 25th. Oh, yeah. where, where are you going? Where are you going? Uh, I got a, I'm going to, I'm going to be out there. I got a show in uh, on the 27th. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with Standing on the Corner. It's like a jazz band, low no. key. Yeah. But they hard. They yeah. did uh, some, there was recently Help Solange put together her shit. No way. And those is the those is the homies before they even did that. So it's crazy. So like They're from out here? They from Brooklyn. Oh, from so Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so just go and link with them and just kick it, work on some music and shit. I got That's another it. show May 30th and then I'm setting some up in the middle of May. Yeah. So yeah, we just working. And are you somebody that like when a project comes out, you just stay working or do you take a little break to reset and learn some more about life? I'll be having to, I'll be having to live my life to make music. Yeah. You know, I'm just that type of person. I gotta, I can't just rap back to back to back to back because I'm gonna just rap about the same shit. Totally. So it's like, as much as I love to go back off past shit, you know, like I'll be trying to paint the new shit. Yeah. So it's like, that's what I'm on right now. Do you ever feel like you have to dislike your older shit to start writing the new shit. Do you ever like, do you ever listen to the old art and go like, ah, oh, that's just not me anymore. I got to make some new shit. Word. Yeah. yeah. Cause growth, but yeah. essentially I, I, I have a hard time playing my music in general at all. Yeah. I Not even like when you first finish it and you're mixing it down, you're like, oh, this is fucking slaps. That's probably why I hate it because yeah. I play it like a hundred times during that right. process. Because you got to like get it perfect. perfect. Every syllable, exactly. like, oh, I got to go fix that. And I'm a perfectionist with that shit. So yeah. it's like, I'll I be over songs. I like, I like, I love performing them, but like, I can't listen to Little Big Man. Because yeah. I'm every time I listen to it, I'm like, oh, I would have did that. I would have did that. I would have did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, but it drives you nuts. You know, it does, but it also get me ready for what I'm going to do on the, the next shit. Yeah. You, you feel me? Speaking of real life, do you have like real life hobbies? What kind of normal guy shit do you do when it's not music industry stuff? Uh, what do I do? I, I just like to smoke weed, but yeah. usually, <laughs> but That's lately, a good hobby out yeah, here. lately, yeah. I, lately I've been trying to chill off that. I just been with my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, what I like to do, go outside, go to the park. I'm a there very normal person. Yeah. Like I be chilling. I don't really be like on shit. And I be like by myself a lot too. Yeah. I like solitude. Yeah. So, I mean, what I like to do, I, not much, man. Really just like rap and just live life just a little it. bit. Just kick it, bro. Yeah. yeah, just experience. Hell yeah. You know? Hey, man, I appreciate you taking the time to come out to the crib. You I know it's know. all the way on the other side of town. Bro, I know you're man. a busy dude. No, and, uh, you know, yeah, yeah I, I'm thankful to catch you on the way up because I think that um, we're going to be seeing a lot more from you in the future coming Word. up. And I think like right now taking these little opportunities, mm-hmm. you know, that shows that somebody who's, to me, making smart choices to put themselves out there and it's mm-hmm. going to lead to even bigger and bigger opportunities. You know I'm what I mean? I'm definitely so, all down for just yeah. like, 
like real people yeah. and this shit because it's rare. Yeah, thank you. you. Know? Well, I'm yeah. gonna take that as a compliment. Hell yeah, yeah, <laughs> For I real. appreciate it, bro. Um, so tell the people where they can find you online. Uh, run that back on everything. R U N D A T B A C K on Instagram mm-hmm. and then on Twitter. R U N D A T B A C C. Maxo. Uh, I'm on all the streaming platforms, everything, yep. YouTube, Maxo Vivo, all that. M-I-P. Maxo with just one X. And it's, uh, yeah, on Spotify. M-A-X-O. M-A-X-O. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're on Spotify, you're on iTunes, you're on SoundCloud, all you're that. everywhere. Videos yeah. on YouTube, just yes. search my shit. You know what Little I mean? Lil Big Man, Out Now, L-I-L-B-I-G-M-A-N. It's a fantastic record. You can put it on for just about any activity that you're partaking in. Mm-hmm. I like to listen to it while I'm driving or while I'm working. <laughs> hey, it's hard. one of those records that I would listen to while I was cleaning, too. That's you fine. know what I mean? That's yeah. fine. So it's that kind of mood. My name is Lee. Some of you guys might know me as Intuition. You can follow me on Twitter at it's intuition and this is you feel me mixed yeah. and mastered by my man ben shin making the shit sound buttery brought to you by skull candy yeah so follow us and follow at skull candy and go beat maxo it's very worth it yeah. thank, you, thank bro. you i G. appreciate it already All good right. look yeah most definitely